Hi guys, today I'm incredibly excited to announce the launch of GMAT Focus Edition Mox uh, or Sigma X GMAT Focus Edition Mox as we call them. And this is something which is a really big day for us. We've been working on look, launching these mock tests for the last four months, studying the GMAT algorithm, as well as building in new features that be useful to you, that will help you score higher, better, and, and, and faster. So let's talk a bit about these mocks. I'm gonna walk you through a couple of case studies. I'm also gonna to, um, to, to demonstrate um, how these mocks provide value to your preparation. Um, I'm also gonna give you a link uh, for those of you who are not EGMAT students as to how you can try the mocks out and really see if, if you like them. Um, but then let's first start with some features. So first of all, you've launched three mocks and, and we, we promise to launch a couple more by, by 6th of December or hopefully before that. Now these mocks are fully adaptive. What it really means is that um, you know, they're question level adaptive, not block level, not section level, which uh, some of the other companies might offer later on. Um, uh, they're fully adaptive and, and, and they are uh, built around the Enhanced Algo that um, the GFE mocks have. We actually did about 200 odd simulations um, on the GMAT Focus mocks and, and, and that's how we came up with this. Um, in terms of the outputs, um, the official mocks give a, um, you know, some, some really good outputs. We've looked at them, we understood what value they provide uh, and, and, and we um, improvised on top of them. And we're gonna, you, I'm going to illustrate that improv improvisation based on, on uh, a couple of case studies. And, and, and then um, based on that, we actually came up with this deep insights, which I believe will help you get more value out of these mocks, uh, help you score higher. So I think with that, let's kind of start with a couple of case studies. The first case study that I'm going to take is of a student who's scored a 615 on these mocks and aims to get to a 645. Now remember, uh, insights provided by mocks are useful only for people who are, you know, at a say 70th, 80th, 85th percentile level. They want to get to that 90th, 95th percentile level. Why? Because someone who gets a, a 40th percentile pretty much has to, in, in, in more cases than not, improve on, on in, in every area. So I'm going to take case studies of um, someone who scored at a, uh, uh, has a starting score of 615 or an 80th percentile and someone who has a starting score of 96th percentile. And I'm going to really show how using these insights you can build uh, your improvement plan. So with that, let's get started with the first case study. Now this is your first case study um, of a student who scored a 615 on, on, on uh, GFE mock. Uh, this is an actual attempt. Um, you can actually see the distribution pieces here. Um, and and, and uh, one of the first things that you really see is the sectional scores. And, uh, and, and so the student scored an 80 on verbal, 81 on quant, and um, an 80 on data insights. You can also see the corresponding percentiles there. So all of that information exists here. Now, one of the other things, which I think when you, when you get a certain sectional score and you have this target score of 655, um, as a student, you you always ask, where should I improve? Should I focus my energy on verbal, quant, or data insights? And this is where um, we, we plugged in the PSP engine or the Personalized Study Planner engine. For those of you who don't know what PSP is, uh, you can click on the link above to really see how we help you build personalized study plans. And, and based on the insights on the PSP engine, you have your target scores. And, and you can read that over here as, a, uh, as well, where you say your estimated quant score is three points um, uh, lower than um, than your target quant score. And it, you know, it says you're currently at that 71st percentile and your goal is to get to that 85th percentile. So, so, so let's kind of see how using this information first, you know, you know exactly what you need to aim for, but then you can go one level deeper to figure out where in quant would you get that improvement. And this is where your subsectional performance is really useful. In this case, you can see that that, that uh, QAD1 is built up of um, algebra and arithmetic percentiles and, uh, and and clearly there's a lot more headroom in arithmetic than in algebra. So clearly one of the first takeaways that the student would have is to get those three points of improvement focus on arithmetic. But then where in arithmetic and this is where you go into that raw data plot over here and, and here um, we have this 3D plot from, from Scholarium where you can uh, track your accuracies against various difficulty levels. Um, what you see over here is, you know, easy medium, the, the student didn't get a whole lot of questions which were easy medium, of course, the student uh, is at a fairly high percentile, um, okay. Uh, medium, you know, he got arithmetic questions in arithmetic, he answered all of them correctly. Medium hard, uh, he answered correctly, every question correctly in both al algebra and arithmetic. Now, when it comes to hard questions, and this is where you can see the big gap between arithmetic and algebra. So, right off the bat, you know, we had that that headroom in arithmetic and we can clearly see 
that um, that headroom can be attained if this person improves um, their abilities um, or their ability to answer hard questions in arithmetic correctly. Now, the fact that we are dealing with hard questions, what it means is that the person knows the concepts, the person knows how uh, to apply the concepts um, at, a, you know, at a reasonable degree, but only in the most advanced application, that's where this person faltered, which is why the 33% accuracy. Also, you can see the average time per incorrect question is, is three minutes and five seconds, indicating that this person spent a lot of time on these questions. So timing wasn't an issue with these questions. Now, where is it that this person needs help with, with regards to hard questions? And this is where you know, we provided this detailed view, but we've given you the power of filters where you can go and see where you faltered. So, Let's look at arithmetic. Let's look at just hard questions. We know this is the area. And I'm going to just focus on, um, I'm going to actually do both correct and incorrect and apply these filters. And, and here again, you can see that 33% accuracy is so a two out of six correct. Um, and, and you can see um, that, that I'm going to actually use just incorrect here and apply. And, and, and what you can see is, you know, two mistakes in advanced topics. So this is where we've uh, put in the topic level information. This I think is much more useful than what, um, uh, what, what the official mocks provide because you can really see where where do these questions uh, where uh, what's the source of these questions and within that we also tell you the subtopics so sets and permutations and combinations and number properties it's estimation and rounding and then word problem that's time and work now this may be a very small statistical set but then combine this when you combine this information with this the the the, uh, the information in Scholarium, you can actually see whether this area, you know, these questions are a problem in general or whether they are a one-off problem. Another interesting piece here, um, you know, the student edited this response uh, and that's where they spend about five and a half minutes, close to six minutes on this. Uh, you can see, um, uh, you know, they initially selected the correct answer and then they went from correct to incorrect. This is question number five here. This is the same question number five over here. Um, and they spent two minutes and two uh, and thirty eight seconds on on this particular edit again, some interesting insights here that you can see so this was one example where you saw how using insights you could narrow it down to 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 saying that hey. To improve corn, I need to focus on improving my ability in arithmetic. To improve my ability in arithmetic, I need to focus on hard questions. To, to and, and, and more specifically in, in sets, PNC, um, uh, uh, time and work, as well as in estimation and rounding. So, so again, you have a target. With this, you can you can go to Scholarium because it's just hard questions. You're good in uh, medium and medium hard. Uh, you can go to hard questions. Um, you can select those topics answer those questions and, and again as you improve your accuracy you can do a round tripping and ensure that you've actually improved with that let's now come to case study two a student who's um, whose current score is 675 which is a 96 percent an incredible score and, and and the student wants to improve to 705 so here i am i am in the students uh, students account you can really see the ability scores, incredible ability in quant, almost a perfect score, 97 percentile, really good ability in DI as well. Um, but again, you can see the gaps here, verbal uh, a three point gap and an NDI, a two point gap overall. Let's kind of, let's analyze the verbal section. Um, and again, you really know what you need to aim for. You don't need to worry about, hey, sh should I aim for 85, 86? You know, 83 is what your goal is, uh, which is 86 percentile. And clearly, the moment you see this, you can really see that, uh, uh, you know, reading comprehension is the issue. There's a lot more headroom over here. Uh, your current ability score is 31 percentile. Your target needs to be um, around that 80th percentile and 49 percentile points is what you need to improve. Again, let's go into raw attempts. Let's do the same analysis. Look at medium difficulty questions, medium hard questions. You can see uh, lots and lots of headroom in RC, even in medium, and and then in in medium hard as well, and and also headroom in um, uh, in, in 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 CR when it comes to medium hard too. Now, one thing that I want to make sure that we do is I'm going to again go to the same analysis. I'm going to look at incorrect questions. I'm going to look at uh, uh, just RC. And I'm going to apply this here. Um, when you see incorrect in RC, you see there are four questions in inference. 
um, and 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 as well as you know you of course one question in in, in main, uh, main idea application and function and the, but the fact really is you have four questions in inference both at medium and medium hard clearly showing this this the student has issues with inference clearly showing that it's not just at an application level but also at a conceptual level um, I also want to show you one other thing I'm going to include CR in here and again this is still just the incorrect piece here and as we include CR what you see is and I'm going to sort it by topic you have issues and inference questions in uh, in CR as well. Now this person is really good in CR. Otherwise, uh, he's made uh, just one other mistake in, um, in in CR here, which is in medium hard. Uh, but but again, um, uh, issues in, in in inference question and those these those issues show up. Um, and, and this is something which I think is, is a clear indication that this person needs to focus on RC. And if they improve their RC, and you know, they'll improve their verbal score. Uh, but not only that, you know, when you think about RC, it is also used on the verbal aspect of um, of of, uh, um, uh, uh, of DI. It's more specifically in in MSR, and to a certain degree in TPA. Only to a certain degree, but in MSR. So let's look at their abilities in in MSR. And here, clearly, you can see. Um, again, 31 percentile in MSR as well. Clearly, a, you know, about a 50 percentile point difference in, in, in MSR. TPA really, really good here. Uh, again, I think the CR piece comes in, and, and um, there are some um, ability gap in, uh, in in GI and TA as well. Um, so, so that's again clear indication of where this person needs to improve if they want to get these two additional points. Um, we can do the same analysis here, um, medium hard hard again really low accuracy in um, in msr and hard uh, and and again really low accuracy in, in gi and t i think they got all the questions wrong again we can do the same analysis to um, to, to see when it comes to hard and incorrect uh, where did they falter again you can see msr case study type passages is where they faltered and gi they faltered in stats as well as in quant type questions um, so clear indication on, on where they need to improve. Uh, the student is actually pretty good in GI otherwise. Medium questions, 100% accuracy. Medium hard, 100% accuracy in GI and TA. Uh, so, so clearly, at a very, very application level in GI uh, um, overall. But in MSR, again, that, that foundation in, um, in, in that's lacking in, in, in RC, that's kind of hampering the student's progress in, in DI and as well as in MSR. And if they improve in this area, they're going to get to that 83 or even higher score in, um, in, in data insights. So, so again, this, uh, hopefully these two case studies illustrate the value of insights that we provide uh, with these mocks and, and, and how using the data that you get with these mocks, you can build your, uh, um, uh, 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 build your personalized improvement plans and, and execute on them. If you need more help with that, you can write to me at trajata.e-shima.com. If you need more help with that, you can also look at this video on PSP as to how to build a personalized study plan. Building a personalized improvement plan is essentially no different than building a personalized study plan. Uh, uh, it's just your starting point is the output of the mock. Also, if you need, uh, uh, click on that link above if or in the description below if you want to know how to attempt uh, a free Sigma X GFE mock. With that, as I always say, happy learning.